Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. I do want to apologize. We're under some severe weather warnings right now. We've got flash flood warnings and tornado watch warnings. So if you can hear it raining in the background, I do want to apologize, but I needed to make this video. And before we get started with that video, I want to say thank you. We're at 19,700 subscribers. That means so much to me. Getting the new year started off great. Uh, hopefully we'll bust 20,000 here within the next week. And I do want to remind everybody you can become a member to the channel for just 99 cents. Now we're starting to weed out today the MVP, VIP, and Pro versions of these memberships. And then all those perks will drop down to the eBuzz Central member which is just 99 cents to support the channel you like and, of course, support the content you like. Now, I do want to send a shout-out to my newest members, which is James Young, Mike Creamer, Eric Hawking, and Aniel Rivera. Antoine Wilk, welcome back. He's been with me for two months, and he rejoined, so thank you for re-upping. But I want to say thank you to all the members out there. You don't know what it means to me to have you support the channel, so thank you very much. And I don't see any better way to start 2023 then covering the newest release of one of my favorite Linux distros, which is Ultramarine. Now, they've made a few changes, and they've changed a couple desktop environments, which I think is going to be really, really nice. Now, Ultramarine is Fedora-based uh, Linux distribution, and what they do is they tweak it. They add a lot of things out of the box that you have to add to Fedora just to get it up and running when you first install it. Ultramarine does that for you and makes everything completely easy, and it's designed to be a workstation or battle station, whatever you want to call it, and it keeps up with the latest and greatest software in the open source community. Now, it's based on Fedora, and it's designed to be 100% bug-for-bug compatible with Fedora, which means you can actually run a migration script that if you're already running Fedora, you can click on this script, run it, and it will actually convert it to Ultramarine, but it's still bug-for-bug, 100% compatible with Fedora. It's developer friendly and it's got sane defaults and then of course we've got some reviews down here you can see one of the last ones i did is right there now what i do want to show you is if you go to download i've covered the flagship version which is budgie and i've also covered the gnome version and they do have a pantheon version but i'm excited to announce that ultramarine does now come with a kde plasma edition now it's got a custom layout which is inspired by pop os this is something I'm really excited to see because I haven't even started it up yet. I wanted to look at it first with you guys, so that way when we're looking at it, we're looking at it together for the first time. So, without any further ado, I want to go ahead and get on over to the desktop. And there it is. If you download it, throw it on a USB, open it in a virtual machine, you will have Ultramarine KDE. Now, you can see the inspiration they're getting. They say it's inspired by Pop! OS. So if you come down here, you've got a panel down here, show desktop here, and then you've got your hidden icons right here, which is notifications, clipboard, lock key status, KDE connect, and then internet, USB, and of course sound. Then you will have your calendar right here. And then if we come over here, you've got your application menu over here. And now if we come back down bottom, you have Firefox, you have terminal settings. First thing I wanna do is let's go to settings. Let's scroll down here and look at about system. And we're running KDE Plasma version 5.26.4. And kernel version is 6.0.15. And the graphics platform is Wayland. Now, if we go back up top and we go to Appearance, you've got the Ultramarine theme right here. And as you can tell, it contains the desktop layout. Now, the reason I point this out is you've also got a Fedora layout. And then, of course, your Breeze, Breeze Dark, and Breeze Twilight. If you're not familiar, if, you, if I wanted to change over to the Fedora, I would click on that. And now this little window pops up. Now, if you want to change the appearance settings, you can. You can also change the desktop and window layout, which would move everything back over where it would be on a normal KDE, but you would have to check mark it right here. And then click apply. I'm not going to change that right now. I'm going to stay in this ultramarine layout. But remember, if you want to change, let's say you were on Breeze Twilight and you wanted to switch back over to Ultramarine, it's going to say Appearance Settings and Desktop Layout if you wanted to go back to this layout. So remember that. That's one of the new features of the newer KDE releases. It gives you more customization opportunities across your desktop. So just remember that. So I'm going to close out of that and that. And I want to go ahead and drop down here. And I want to go ahead and see if they have HTOP. And they do. 
Right now, with just the terminal open, I'm at about 1.6 gigabytes of RAM being used. It's a little heavier than normal, but I think I might be running a little bit more in the RAM because I am in a virtual machine and I've only got four cores issued to it, so that's something to look at. I am going to install this on hardware later, and once I do, I will definitely give you an update because this is beautiful, guys. I love what they've done with KDE in this situation. They've kind of given it their own custom feel. I know a lot of you out there are saying, it doesn't really matter to me, KDE KDE, but I always like to see something new in the Linux community. If you disagree with me, please drop that in the comments below. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. And we were just in settings. I'm not going to go over that. Uh, I've covered settings quite often in previous videos. And right now we're at Dolphin File Manager. And I love what they've done with the look here. You've got the transparency in the background. So the wallpaper is going to bleed through a little bit. And you've got your usual suspects over here. And of course your home folder is right here. And for all of you that panicked with Dolphin on other releases that doesn't have all your pictures and videos and downloads folders there, they're already there out of the box for you here. So, And then down here you've got your devices and then of course Ultramarine removable devices, trash, Dolphin. Great file manager, very powerful file manager, lets you get work done and also gives you a lot of tools to make that work a lot easier. So let's close out of that. And then if we come up here to the menu, you've got favorites, uh, all applications. You've got aggregator, arc, crash processes, DNF Dragora, which is to install and remove software. Let's go ahead and open that up and take a peek at that. And if you guys have never used this, this reminds me a little bit of Synaptic Package Manager, which is more of a type search install tool. If you're familiar with that, you could definitely be familiar with this, but once it refreshes itself right here, I'll show you exactly how you use it, exactly how you search for software and what you would do to actually install it. So we'll let that refresh and then we'll move forward. So it has completed refreshing and it refreshed everything, guys. It refreshed the Terra packages, the RPM Fusion packages. It pretty much went out and got everything fresh. And you can come up here and you could pretty much do a search. Let's do a search for something like GIMP. We'll go ahead and do that search, and there is GIMP right there. So all you would have to do is click on it, and if you wanted to install it, just come down here and click Apply. That is how easy they make it. You could do that for any application that you wanted to install. Let's go ahead and do something like Caden Live, and it's got Caden Live 22.08 or 22.12. So if you wanted the newest version, you could just come over here, click on it, and then come down here and apply. It makes it that simple. That's DNF Dragora. It makes installing on here so simple, so easy. Like I said, if you can use Synaptic Package Manager, DNF Dragora is going to be totally easy for you to use. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go back up here. Let's go to All Applications. And then you do have Discover Software Center. I recommend just getting rid of that and just relying wholly on DNF Dragora. Dolphin, Dragon Player, Alyssa, Firefox, Firewall. You could set that up if you needed to. HTOP, K Address. So you're going to have a lot of the KDE applications here. Camosa, KCal, KDE Partition Manager, KMAG, KMail, uh, Contact Console, KPatience. Uh, you do have the Latte Doc here. You've got LibreOffice installed out of the box. PIM, Data Exporter, Spectacle for Screenshots. And then your system monitor, let's see if it's given us the same info that we were getting on HTOP. And it's not. It's given us 2.5. And like I said, once you install this and it's not using RAM in the background, those numbers will drop exponentially. So let's go ahead and close out of this. Next thing, I want to go right-click. Let's configure desktop and wallpaper. And let's see what kind of wallpapers we do get. We've got the dark version, which we're looking at here. And then you would have a light version there. Kind of like that. I mean, either way, it looks really nice. And then you're going to have your KDE suite of wallpapers that you get with most of your KDE distributions and your KDE desktop environment. So that is definitely a great looking operating system. If you're somebody that likes Fedora uh, and you're somebody that likes using RPM Fusion and things like that, but you want those tools installed out of the box, you can't go wrong with Ultramarine. And now that they actually have a spin that's got KDE, now I do want to tell everybody this is a spin. It's not a distribution. 
Ultramarine is a spin of Fedora because it's using the Fedora kernel in the base of Fedora. So it's a spin. It's not a distro. They haven't changed the kernel in any way and they haven't modified it anyway. Like I said, it's 100% bug for bug compatible with Fedora. If you're already running Fedora 37 and you want to use Ultramarine, you can run a migration script and everything will migrate to an Ultramarine look and all of their tweaks that they've made, but you still have that solid Fedora base. What do y'all think? Are you happy to see Ultramarine finally come out with a KDE version? Is it something you might give a shot to? Whatever you might think, please let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm, which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. You also can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents a month, but that's not all. We are also on Nutrion, which you can become a member on at $2.99 a month, or Odyssey, which is $4 a month. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe zip on over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.